As a gamer, I have grown up on many classic titles like Doom, Half-Life, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Mario Brothers, just to name a few. One set of games that had always piqued my interest and gave me a real sense of wonder back in the day was Metroid. The twists in the level design, the freaky alien bosses, and the crazy abilities that helped you out with not only traversal, but with combat as well. It was beautifully woven together into an action-adventure experience that made you really work for it. It has been years since we have seen a legitimate return to form for Metroid. I'm well, happy to say that a little group of developers called Team Cherry have captured the essence of a good Metroid game and made it their own. The game that I'm talking about here is Hollow Knight. Now, I am not here to say whether or not the game is good. We already know that it is good. So let's get that out of the way. This is not really a review. It's more of a discussion, if anything, about how this group of developers were able to bring a genre back to life with a six-pack and a magnificent beard to match. I am that impressed with this game. Say what you want about it, there is no arguing that it deserves the praise that it has received. Without further ado, let's get depressed, invade some dreams, and explore the unexplored. The story in Hollow Knight is a tricky one to understand. I have played the game now twice, and I am still unraveling the Shakespearean tale that the game has been delivering to me. I am not going to go into a lore dump with you, but I will explain the raw basics of what is going on from when you start the game until you get past the first area. I don't want to give out too many spoilers since unraveling those mysteries yourself is quite the thrill. You are a lone and mute adventurer bug who arrives at a place called Hollow Nest. You are told right away that something awful is going on in this community of bugs. Loved ones are disappearing, some have lost their minds, and others are being resurrected and used as puppets. Kind of like a zombie if you think about it. You meet all kinds of zany characters along the way that open up quest lines, shops, and dialogue which continues the story. The cool thing about this is that none of the story is spoon-fed to you. You need to really look for it and chew into it. The more you explore and discover, the more enthralled you become in the story. Even the environments tell a story of their own. This kind of storytelling is hard to pull off and keep interesting for a lot of people, but Team Cherry really did pull it off and made it to where every twist and turn was worth it, even if some sequences were hard as hell and made me question my sanity. I believe the major part of what makes it so worth it is the environments and the music. Both of these elements make you wonder and think. There are actually several moments in the game where I stood out in the open air of an environment and just listened to the music and wondered as to what could have happened in the said area, along with what kind of significance it bore. To say the least, the story is extremely interesting. There are also expansions that provide more insight to the lore of Hollow Knight as well as the gameplay. The nice thing about how Team Cherry has handled their DLC is that it has all been free. If you happen to pick up a new copy of the game, they will automatically be bundled with your download. Therefore, nobody misses out. It all relies on how thorough you are with your exploration when it comes to actually experiencing these expansions to their fullest. Combat in Hollow Knight is fluid and methodical. The best way that I can describe it is that every enemy is your dancing partner. You need to keep in step with them and read their movements in order to avoid damage. When an opening is seen, you can start striking without taking damage. Failing to keep in step and read movements properly will lead to many deaths and frustration. Upgrades to your sword slash nail only makes the dance shorter, not easier. There were more than a few bosses that had me stumped and made me need to walk away for a moment just because I wasn't getting it. But with an open mind and persistence, I did prevail. There are many bosses in the game that will test your mantle, how well you know the game mechanics, and if you can use your abilities effectively. These enemies slash bosses are not going to be your run of the mill, I just got this ability so their weakness is that. They come in all different shapes and sizes, and they have their own strengths and weaknesses. So again, it's actually a better idea most of the time to observe and avoid attacks at first, so that way you don't lose precious HP. As the game goes on and as you travel to late game areas, 
Some enemies will actually take away 2 HP versus 1. You see that bar at the left hand corner? Yeah, those marks are your HP. If you lose all of them, you go back to the last bonfire you rested at. <coughs> Sorry, bench that you rested at. And a shade will spawn where you died. Death has two consequences. One, your MP slash soul meter is halved. Two, all of the currency you collected up to that point is left where that shade is. Now, at this point, you have a choice. You can either leave your shade and come back later, or you can go back and get it. However, if you die again on your way getting back to the shade, a new one will take its place, and you will lose all of the money that you had with the previous shade forever. You do have a merchant who can get them back for you without too much of an issue, but it comes at a price. There are also some merchants who will actually help you keep your currency in a bank, so that way you don't have to worry about losing it and going back to get them if you die. So either spend them, stash them, or just be more careful. So in all, the combat and death mechanics in this game are really easy to grab onto, but if you become too careless, you will see how easily the game can make you rage quit without a second's remorse. The world in Hollow Knight is beautiful and daunting. Make no mistake, Hollow Knight is a huge game. Just exploring the whole map will take you around 13 to 15 hours. Doing everything in the game is a different story altogether. As you explore the world of Hollow Knight, you will come across barriers and obstacles that you will have no way to pass through. This is where the latent abilities and items will come into play. The more you explore and complete quests, the more abilities and items you will achieve to do more exploring. As I said before, a lot of these items and abilities will actually be essential to you surviving boss encounters, but fortunately those kinds of bosses are locked behind said obstacles that require those abilities slash items most of the time, so you won't be thrown into a fight that you cannot possibly win. Another thing that will help you with exploration and is extremely important is your map. Now this isn't your traditional map system where the game automatically plots out the lands that you explore as you play. The mapping mechanic works as so. First, you must acquire the map for the area by either purchasing it from the cartographer that you find in the local area, or buying it later at the hub area. Second, buy a quill that way your character can actually write on the map that you purchased from the said cartographer. Third, and the last step, find a bench to rest at. Now, take note that your character will only plot out the rooms and rows that you have explored in the set area whenever you rest at a bench. You will often be exploring an area that is not covered by your map and not knowing where you are going until you find a bench and write it down after exploring the said area. This adds a sense of mystery and wonder. You truly never know what you are going to find in these unexplored rooms slash areas, especially in your first playthrough. But upon exploring them and going back to a bench and reaching a new bench, you get more insight on what you have explored and what you have missed. I'm sure you've already heard the rumors in some of the early reviews for this game. And one of those notorious ones is that this is a 2D Dark Souls. I don't believe that deserves such a title. It's a lot more forgiving than that, but don't get me wrong, it is difficult. And the death mechanic is similar, but I chalk that up to inspiration at best. This game deserves its own identity and its own slot in gaming history. As I said before in the video, there were several moments in the game where I had to stop and walk away because I just wasn't getting a puzzle or a boss fight. Here is a little taste of what I went through. Prepare to see this a lot. Fortunately, platforming mistakes don't cost you your whole life bar. It only costs you one HP. So this is more forgiving than most platforming mechanics out there. Not to mention you can heal on the spot from any wound, as long as you have the time, soul energy, and positioning to do it. It's something of a godsend for some players, especially considering the tougher sections that you will go through in this game. To further help you with the difficulty of the game, there is a mechanic called charms. These charms come in all different shapes and sizes. Some make you stronger, some give you different abilities, and certain combinations will actually give you specific effects. 
Overall, charms are meant to help you in any way possible, as long as you are able to find them, of course. Some are found by just locating them. Some are found by actually defeating certain bosses. The more you find, the more you can equip overall. So be sure to collect and search for them for maximum benefits. This encourages even further exploration in the game for the sake of getting stronger. Yeah, you have your health upgrades and soul aim slash MP expansions as well, but the charm system really does take the cake when it comes to expanding gameplay. The whole point of this video was to draw attention to a beautifully put together game that deserves praise, and to draw attention to the very studio that made it. The artwork is great to look at, and it truly immerses you. If you are even slightly compelled to play this game now, I will consider this video a success. The passion and attention to detail in the game speaks for itself. We need more games like this being made. Right now, you can pick up the game for free on the PS4 and PS5. It is available on the Game Pass for Xbox One, and you can get it for relatively cheap on a sale on Steam. I highly recommend picking this up. It's a beautiful experience. I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you for watching.